Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Body by Haley, um, Wednesday Pilates. Today we will be utilizing a chair and a small ball, a small Pilates ball or a small pillow if you have it. Um, I'm using my Pilates ball today. I typically use a, a pillow, but I wanted to switch it up just for myself. So this is like a squishy little ball. Um, if you're interested in buying one of these, you can get them on Amazon for like $4. Um, so I'm going to be utilizing that today as long as my dog doesn't try to eat it. And if not, I'll grab for my pillow. So if you have a small pillow and you want to use that, please go ahead and have that somewhere handy. <laughs> and oh, she's already, she's already eyeing it. Um, if I fail to cue any modifiers that work better for your body, go ahead and take those modifications. <laughs> um, I will try to do my best to cue all the necessary ones that I see fit. Um, but you know your body is better. You know sort of what you need to do. <laughs> okay, in order to um, progress nicely through this movement, we will be starting on our backsides today, but you can set your chair up the way that I have right here with the seat facing towards your mat. All right, come on, Penny. Come go. Come on, girl. Get in there. Go ahead, get in, good girl. All right, looks like she can't be trusted with a Pilates ball. Okay, so I'm gonna rest my ball up there because I'm not gonna use it for um, the time being. If for some reason the music is too loud, please let me know and I can adjust that for you. If not, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna lie down on our mats. So go ahead and make your way onto your back, lowering yourself down. Good, here we go, you all. Arms down by your side, feet planted, hip distance apart and parallel. All right, I want you to reach the crown of your head long towards your back wall and close your eyes. Take four nice big breaths here and just feel where your body is today. Take an inhale in through your nose and a big sigh, exhale, deepen and breathe out through your mouth. Take that again, inhale, trying to expand your rib cage laterally, meaning moving to the sides and then exhale, bring it back together, sort of like an accordion. All right, so if you could allow your ribs to shift in the same motion that an accordion opens and closes, that's what I want you to try to visualize here as you take these next breaths. One more time, in through your nose, filling up your lungs. And an exhale, deep sigh. At the very end of your sigh, begin to rock into your pelvic rocks, moving forward and back, keeping those nice big breaths, trying to straighten out your pelvis as you take these rocks, right? Especially if you've been sitting in a desk for the morning, or maybe this is the first time you're really moving your body today. Just lining up your spine, setting everything into place, using these pelvic rocks to do so. As you continue to rock, check to make sure that your shoulders are not coming forward. I want you to think about wrapping your shoulders back and down, keeping your collarbone wide towards the ceiling. Good, keep your breath flowing in through your nose and a big exhale, sigh out through your mouth. Begin to pull your belly in towards your spine as you take these rocks. Good, and find a range of motion that works for you today. It does not have to be super big, does not have to be super small. I just want you to find mobility in your body. All right, taking this about five or six more times, rock it forward and back, and just feel where your body is as you're lying here. Good, starting to really um, close your abs towards your midline, knitting them together. All right, go ahead and take your final rock and then go ahead and shake your pelvis out, rock it, wag it like a dog, and then find that neutral spine. From here, I want you to draw one leg at a time into tabletop. All right, you have your neutral. Starting off nice and slow, make sure the back sides of your ribs are attached to the mat. Take an inhale, right leg taps down. Exhale, switch. We're just gonna take some single leg toe taps to check to make sure that right from the get-go, we have our abs engaged. Switching side to side, right? As you're working here, I want you to think that your legs are dead weight. The only reason that they're moving is because your low abdominal walls are deepening to pull in. So sometimes if you point so hard through your feet and your toes, it really fires up your quads. So if you're trying to relax in your quads a bit more, just think of having nice, dead, loose ankles, dead quads, right? And all that work happening in your center core. Good, inhale, 
and exhale, switch. Keep lengthening through the back of your neck. Don't allow that to shorten and jut your chin towards the ceiling. You wanna keep your spine nice and long. Good, you all. We have this eight more times, concentrating on relaxing your quads and keeping neutral. Seven. Good, last six. Try not to actually tap your toe to the ground. I want it to go to a one inch hover and then draw in deep and pull it back in. Right, that idea of the drawbridge, your legs are the drawbridge, your abs are the pulley system. They have to deepen to pull up. All right, take this two more times. And then meet me with both legs into tabletop. From here, we take double leg lowers and lifts. Inhale, double leg toe taps. Maybe only taking it down half the distance, exhale, deepen and pull. Now, if you're starting to fatigue or feeling any sort of low back pain during this series, go ahead and place those hands underneath your sacral region and create a little cradle for your pelvis to sit. All right, if your hands there are not enough, you can also put a pillow underneath there and force your pelvis into that posterior tilt. All right, here we go, you all. We have four more. Check your spine for four. Inhale, exhale, deepen and pull. Good, relax the tension in your neck, three. Good, nice, Laura. And exhale, deepen. Good, dead weight in your legs, too. Legs have never felt heavier. Exhale, deepen and pull. Good, you all, last one. Inhale, down. Exhale, drop back to tabletop. Once you have found your neutral in tabletop, drop your legs, rock your knees side to side, release in your hip flexors. Good, if you need to stretch your legs out, just find length in the front of your pelvis, give it a little shake up and down, and we will come into our little ab blast, uh, sorry, not our abs, our glute hamstring blast series. So go ahead and scoot your way closer to your chair. You're going to grab for your ball or your pillow and place your heels on your chair at the edge, hip distance apart and parallel. Okay, so the, a good sort of frame of reference to line your body up is you don't wanna have your buns too close where your knees are coming towards your chest. You wanna find that sweet spot that's like a 90, 90 degree angle as best as you can with your legs. Place the ball in between your knees or your pillow. Place your hands down by your side. All I want you to do here is find your neutral, pull your belly into your spine, take a nice big inhale to prepare, and as you exhale, just squeeze the pillow. Don't shift in your pelvis. Take that again, inhale, open. Exhale, legs come together, your pelvis remains neutral. So the reason that we are doing this is so that we can really just activate our inner thighs without sort of smushing as I curl, right? You don't wanna hunker down into this. You wanna maintain that neutral that we just worked on. And just activate and warm up your inner thighs. Exhale, squeeze, inhale, open. Good, check to make sure that your collarbone is still nice and wide. Good, you wanna open just enough so that you don't lose your pillow. So if you open your legs too far, right, your pillow will hit you, fall out from your legs but just activating right in between our thighs, right below our pubic bone and going down the inside of our leg. Here we go for 10, exhale, inhale, open. Exhale, deep in nine, breathe, relax the tension in your eyebrows. And seven. Good, for these last six, when you squeeze that ball deep in your abs, six. Right, so now we're adding another layer on. Exhale, deepen, deepen those abs, five. Still maintaining neutral. Exhale, four. Fog up a mirror with your breath. Last three. Good, you all, two more. After your second one, I want you to hold that in squeeze. Go ahead and squeeze and hold. From here, keep that engagement in your inner thighs. Shift and tuck your pelvis so your low back smushes into the mat. And just lift your hips off of your mat a fist distance, right? So just one fist. And then lower, roll back down. Coming all the way back to neutral. And start again. Squeeze the pillow or ball. Curl and lift hip distance. So, sorry, fist distance. And lower, roll back down. Good, that's all we're doing. So we're warming up our glutes and our hamstrings, just lifting ever so slightly and seeing how much we can really find that posterior tilt or that shifting, sending our low back into the floor, rolling as you lift. 
good you all keep going here we have this for 10. try to activate right where the crease of your cheeks happen right that's your essentially your glute hamstring connector six good are you thinking about your abs let them help you do the work five don't just put it in the back side of your body if you want the front side to help as well place it into your low abs here we go press and breathe for four and down good after these last three we begin to elevate our hips a bit higher continuing with the same concept squeezing the pillow rolling up give me one more like that just that fist distance and slowly lower down. This time, continue taking the squeeze of those inner thighs. Squeeze, roll, lift your hips a bit higher now, coming to the midpoint in your back. Scoop your belly in more. Pull your glutes and wrap them lower down. Good. Now, as we're taking this, continue moving just in that same fashion. I want everybody to gaze at the object, whatever that is, in between their legs. And if it is moving and shifting side to side as you're going up or going down, you want to take it a bit slower. And the whole goal here is pelvic stability, engaging glute and hamstring. So you're trying to not allow that sway in the pillow or the ball. Right? And we've increased the difficulty by elevating our feet off of the floor, by using an extra object. We're, we keep varying it up. Good, breathe. And lower, give me this four more times. Peel it up. Remember, just coming to your midpoint in your back, your T point or your thoracic spine. It's about your 12th vertebra in your thoracic. Last three. And slowly lower. Good, you all. Hopefully by now you're feeling the backsides of those legs as well as your inner thighs. Concentrate on pulling your low belly in. You also may feel this in your back, depending on how high you are going up. Good, last two, keep that squeeze at the pillow. On your next one, I need you to squeeze and roll your hips up and hold your hips up. Coming to that halfway point, take little dips of your hips, down an inch, up an inch. Down an inch, up an inch, keep the squeeze of the pillow. Here we go for 10, breathe. We have one more series after this, nine. Eight, keep curling your pelvis, seven. Open your collarbone, six, five. Ooh, this is a burn in, four, and three. Curl more, good, scoop it out, two. Last one, hold your hips up. Give me pulses on the pillow or the ball. Pulse it in, 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 in. Here we go for 10, and nine, and squeeze, and eight, and seven. Keep wrapping, six, five, you got it. Four, belly in, three, pelvic floor up, two, collarbone wide. Last one, take an inhale at the top, exhale, slowly roll back down. Here we go for eight, seven, six, slow, five, curl it, four, three, say a little prayer, two, and one. Good, take that ball or pillow from out in between your legs, lift your legs to the ceiling, shake them out, release some of that tension. If it feels good for you, take a flop, flop, and stretch. So you release the tension without any weight bearing and lengthen long behind those hamstrings. And we'll move on into our next sequence. All right, you guys, place your feet down. We're going to come up on, into a seated position. So go ahead if you wanna turn onto your side to get up or just elevate yourself up into your seated position. Continuing on with our pillow or our small ball, you can place your feet at the edge of your mat, hip distance apart. We're not utilizing the chair for this next series. We're gonna take a roll down sequence. Okay, so sitting up nice and tall, like you're behind a wall. If you need to modify this, just open your legs out a little bit wider. If you cannot get out of your hip flexors, try stretching your legs out and varying the range at which you take your legs together or apart. All right, I'm going to start hip distance, feet planted, ball or pillow in hands, reach that object, right? From here, I want to be careful that I don't start to initiate the movement by my shoulders coming forward, right? I wanna keep my shoulders rolling back and down. The movement initiates up and I begin to roll halfway down. Good, keeping my shoulders coming together. Find that sort of sweet spot where you feel a little bit of a quiver. If you don't feel the quiver, pull your belly in further, relax your quads more, and then slowly round and come back up. 
Good. And take that again. Grow taller as you roll down. It's as if somebody was scooping out your belly, like an ice cream scooper, getting that nice rounded shape. Tuck your pelvis more. Good. And lift and pull. Good, you all. If you go too far down, you may find that you sort of have to hiccup on the way up. All right, so you don't want to go so far down that you feel like you have to yank your way up, right? Go to the point right before that. All right, here we go. Roll it back and down for four. Belly pulls in. Try to relax those quads again. Deepen and pull. The only way to relax your quads is to build strength in your transverse abdominals. Last three. And it does take a long time. So if you're finding, oh my gosh, I've been doing this for so long. My hip flexors are still turning on. You are still building strength. One day it may just click. That's sort of what happens for me. Breathe and curl. The more that you continue to practice, the more mind-body connection you'll have, the more awareness you'll have. Here we go, last one, roll down. Pull your belly in, keep your shoulders back and down. Good, can you tuck and roll in your pelvis even more? Good, lift your arms to halo. Draw them back down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, curl lower and scoop your belly more, right? So when you pull the pillow down, I need you to think about tucking your pelvis more. Not lowering your back down more, just tucking at your pubic bone. Here we go, you all. We have inhale for eight, deepen and pull. Good, seven. It does not matter if you cannot get that pillow all the way overhead, six, even if you just take it up a few inches, right? The work is on the way down, four. Deepen and pull, good, pull your belly in further. Last three, breathe. Good, try to relax your quads. Two, inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale, and exhale. Good, draw yourself all the way to the top. Take a quick break in a very straight position. Take an inhale, and exhale again. Roll it back and down. Breathing, finding that halfway point. We bend at our elbows now and send it overhead. Inhale, bend at the elbow, exhale, reach it long. So you can imagine, this is called chopping wood or this is a variation of chopping wood with your arms, right? So you have the hammer, or the hammer, my gosh. Can you tell I've never chopped wood? You have the ax in between both hands, right? The ax is your ball or your pillow and you're sending it down and curling. Here we go for five, exhale, deep and good. The further back you go, the harder it is, four. Good, you all, last three, breathe. Can you relax your quads? Good, no tension in your toes. Two, keep the curl. One more, inhale, exhale, pull yourself up. Good, sit up nice and tall. Take a breather, inhale, shake your head left and right if you need to. Exhale, we go back down, creating a nice flow, deepen and curl. From here, we take our Russian twist or a variation of our Russian twist. So I'm going to twist to the right, keeping a curl in my pelvis, reach my arms long, pull it back in, twist to the left. Reach, bend and twist. Lengthen, deepen and twist. Good, so take it slow because I don't want your knees to shift. I don't want your heels to shift. I don't want your hips to shift, right? It is a true twist in a ringing, ringing out of that torso. All right, here we go. Give me four more total. Breathe for four. And twist. Good, last three. Can you twist further? Can you deepen that curl in your pelvis too? You got it. All right, last one. I know that I can even talk. And pull yourself back up. Good, you guys. Drop whatever you have in between your legs and let your thighs open. Take a nice forward fold. Just let everything release. Shake your head if it feels good. Gently right and left. Oh, those ones are hard. <laughs> all right, you all. Unfortunately, we are not done here, but we're almost done. So go ahead and round yourself up to a seated position. We take a few more sequences here, so stay with me. Plant your feet back, hip distance apart. Right? Again, those same modifiers apply here. If you're sick of your object and you want to decrease some of the difficulty, just start to go back and forth, back and up with your hands behind your thighs. If not, here we go, lengthen that ball long. Good, take an inhale, sit up two inches taller towards the ceiling, close your ribs, pull your belly in. From here, begin to roll back. And we're staying again in that C shape, that halfway point. From here, 
your object moves in big circles. All right, so it's not our torso, it's just our arms moving. We are trying to keep our belly in this C shape. Here we go for four. Good, you all, three. If you're feeling pain in your low back and you just scoop your pelvis more, if you cannot maintain that, don't go down quite so low. Two. Good, inhale, exhale, deepen and pull. Last one, reverse that, finding our obliques here. For six. Good, you all. Five. For a harder sequence, you can try stretching your legs out. Four. Ooh. And three. Good. Can you curl that pelvis more? Good. Don't let your feet shift. Two. And last one. You guys, if we don't have a six back by summer, something's wrong. Lift us up. Ugh. All right. Let those thighs open up. Drop your head. Shake it out left and right. <sighs> All right, <laughs> go ahead and roll yourself up. We come to our next sequence. We are not going to be utilizing our ball, so place that away. We're gonna come for some tricep push-ups at the back edge of our chair. So your chair can stay the same direction that it's facing. Grab some water if you need. We'll make our way. You can just go ahead and plop your butt down onto your surface. Okay, if you don't have a chair for this and you're using your couch, that's totally fine too. If you don't have either of those things, um, just use uh, the floor. All right, so hip distance apart, parallel. Let's go ahead and place the heels of our hands onto the edge of our chair. Once we feel secure, right, I want you to just practice holding your shoulders open and then just feel what it feels like to kind of press and stretch your arms, right? That's the idea that I want you to take as you begin to lift yourself off so that you don't collapse as you draw your hips off of your seat, okay? So find that sort of resistance and then go ahead and walk yourself out. All right, from here, remember, we are trying not to lift our hips in this uh, certain sequence. We're trying to let our behind glide right along the edge of the chair. Now, if you're feeling pain in your wrist, try reaching, uh, try moving your fingertips or in the heels of your hand closer to the edge of the chair so there's not quite so much flexion in your wrist. You can also practice not straightening your arms all the way, which I don't want you to do anyways, right? You're coming to that sort of modified bent position. If this does not feel good on your shoulders and you wanna open your palms to the outer sides of the chair, sometimes that does provide a little modifier. All right, so find what works for you today. Here we go for eight and seven. Good, collarbone wide, shake your head left and right. Six, good, you all breathe. Five, nice neutral straight spine. Four, again, see if your legs can be dead weight here. Three, that'll really locate it to your upper body. Nice, last two, breathe. Last one, lower and lift all the way, sit your butt down, good. Take a little forward fold here, drop your arms, try to find your palms onto the floor if you can, and just take a few nice big breaths, inhale, and exhale. Good, this time as you inhale, lengthen through your spine, fingertips at the edge of the mats and exhale, forward fold. Sort of like monkey in yoga, inhale, fingertips, find the mat, you lengthen through your spine, nice flat back, pull your belly in and lower down. Good, you all, three more times. The head reaches long, shoulders back and down, spine straight and lower. The remedial exercise for your spine, just as a little break before we go in next tricep push-up sequence last one lengthen through your fingers through your spine through the crown of your head pull your belly in and lower down round up one vertebrae at a time three coming back to our vertical position two and one all right you all we keep increasing the difficulty here if this is too challenging for you just stay with two feet down but if you're ready to try something new go ahead and make your way back into your tricep push-up position here. Now, I want you to extend your right leg out. From here, we bend and lift. Bend and lift. So I'm bending my arms, stretching my leg. Stretching my arms, bending my leg. So it's a little bit of a coordination thing. 
Took me a second to get into it, right? So it's one bends, the other stretches. All right, you all for eight, push. Good, seven, pull your belly in. Good, nice work, you all, six. Good, that's nice, Kristen, that's even harder. Yeah, you can extend your leg off the floor if you want, or you can let it lower down to the floor. Five. Good, four more, four. And push. And three. And push. Good, you all, two more, collarbones wide, belly in and up. Good, last one, make it your best, inhale down. Exhale, push, good, sit your butt down. Whew. Shake your arms. Nice little shimmy for you. Place the feet together, ankles together, knees together. Take your hands into prayer position. We'll take chair in yoga. So take a nice big inhale. You're going to twist and find your right elbow connected, sorry, your left elbow connected to your right knee. From here, I want you to try to center the palms in between your sternum. Engage your focus up towards the ceiling. Finding that thoracic spine twist. Good, take two big breaths here, I know it's hard. Inhale. And exhale, keep pressing on that knee to increase your stretch and your twist. One more, inhale. And exhale, bring it home. Good, you all, opposite side. Now right elbow to left knee. Again, once you get there, try to press your hands, the center of your hands towards your sternum. To center it off, look towards the ceiling. Let's take a nice big inhale. Try to not allow your knees to shift. And a big sigh, exhale. Again, keep pressing and finding that resistance. Increase your stretch, inhale. And big exhale, sigh. All right, you all, unwind. Drop back home to center. My arms feel like jello. I'm sure yours do as well. We'll take our last set of push ups with our left leg coming into our tabletop position. All right, you all, when you're ready, make your way into your reverse tabletop. Oh, even this is challenging. All right, extend your left leg out long. Bend and lift. You kind of have to get going into it and see what feels good. Yeah, so you can either do it elevated, right, with that leg extended, or as you lengthen, you can tap it down and pull it up. Sort of two versions or anywhere in between. Here we go for six. Push. Good. Nice neutral spine. Five. Try not to tuck at the end of that pelvis, right? Find your sits bones towards the floor. Four. Whew. Three. Breathe. Three. Push. And two. Lengthen and reach. All right, you all. I know it's hard. Last one. Inhale down. Exhale. Push. Good. Sit your butt. Ooh. I think I was going to collapse there. Shimmy your shoulders. Good, let's take a little wrist stretch. Take the palm of your left hand, place it on gently onto your wrist and find that nice little stretch. Good, take a nice big inhale here. And exhale, maybe take a few circles, get that blood flowing back into the wrist and opposite side, right palm to left wrist. Press. Um, Laura, flip one hand so that you're stretching. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then push gently, and there you go. You feel that little stretch. There you go. All right, take those circles. All right, you all, we ready to get into our next sequence? Go ahead, stand up, flip your chairs. Again, grab for your pillow or your ball. We come into a standing sequence here. This one's going to work a bit more glute hamstring, side glute all that good stuff. All right, so I'm going to place the ball behind my right knee. Now, depending on the size of your pillow, if it's too heavy, this might be difficult. You might wanna do this without your pillow. If you just start to get frustrated because the pillow keeps dropping, you can also just choose to do it without your pillow. But if you're ready, go ahead and find that flexion behind your knee. Now, I want you to be at a forward pitch. So you have to be far enough away from your chair that you can take that forward pitch and have a tail out, chest out, a soft bend in my supporting leg. All right, from here, it's a small movement. I lift my heel towards the ceiling and I lower back down. 
I have to continually think about squeezing my right heel to my cheeks. If I don't do that, I'll lose my ball. Right, inhale and exhale, draw. I've even seen people do these with a weight behind their knee. So if you wanted to really challenge yourself, you could put that weight behind there, but that always just scares me because what if you drop it on your toe or something? All right, here we go, you all. We have eight. Keep squeezing, hamstrings, seven. Good, pull your belly in. Six, yes, you're utilizing this surface to hold on to, but don't abuse it. Don't put all your weight into it, right? Five, you wanna stand because we're also trying to fire up this side cheek, right? Right there, three. Whew. All right, you all, two. Last one, lift it up. Keep it in the up position. I want you to externally rotate your femur and internally rotate your femur. Then again, you have to take this slow and internal, right? Keep the angle of the knee small. Good, you all. Pull your belly in to check to make sure that you're not going into an arch in your low spine. Good, can you drop down and get deeper on that working leg? Or sorry, the supporting leg. Check to make sure that your knees are tracking over your second toe. Not your first toe, not your pinky toe, just your second toe. Weight is primarily in your heel. Good, you all, give me this for three more sets, three. Again, you can always just get rid of your object, two. Last one, hold it externally rotated. Glide it side, doggy pin on fire hydrant, ooh, and back. And side, so we're staying externally rotated and we're gliding our knee side and back. Good, keep hugging your heel into your glutes. Good, although we are working our right side, I'm really feeling this on the left side. So if you're not feeling it on your left, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Tanya, you are, I see that. All right, here we go for eight. Oh, I know, seven. This is the last thing on this side. Six, keep squeezing that glute to the heel. Five, good, draw your navel in and up. Four, a light touch on your bar. Three, breathe. Good, you all, two more, here we go. In and back. And pull it into your side and lengthen back. Good, you all, ooh, drop that object. Shake your legs out, shake your booty out. Oh, that is one that really gets that opposite glute. Yeah, bang it out if you need to before we make it into our other side. All right, when you're ready, same, same thing on the opposite side. Of course, this ball is not going to want to stay. All right, so I'm at this pitched forward, right? Hinging from my hips, bending in my supporting knee, flexing both ankles essentially. Lift it up and lower down. Squeeze to lift, keep it parallel and breathe, right? Check to make sure that as you lift, you're not expanding your ribs out. You wanna keep them pulled in as best as you can. Again, the weight stays shifted back in your supporting leg. So wiggle those toes. Knee tracks right over your second toes. Don't allow that sort of fold in. All right, you all, we have seven. Breathe, pull your low belly in, six. Try to relax your upper traps, right? The muscles right where your shoulders connect to your head, five. Try to have a sense of relaxation there, four. Good, breathe, three. When your leg lifts, so does your abdominal wall. Two. Ooh, that supporting glute, there it is. Last one, hold it up. External rotation, internal rotation. Femur glides open, femur shuts. You can open the door and close the door. All right, you all, we have this for six. And in. Five. And in. Good, four more. Keep your chest square to your chair or whatever surface you're holding onto. Three, get deeper in your supporting leg. Two. All right, last one, hold it externally rotated. Doggy pan on fire hydrant. Oh gosh, nothing's ever hurt quite so much. And back. Here we go for eight and take it back. Don't allow your weight to shift forward when you bring your leg side. Six, breathe. Try to keep your leg elevated. Five, ooh, my gosh, I'm losing it. Four, here we go. 
Breathe, pull your low belly in. When you really start to fatigue, that's when you have to think about your form 10 times more. Two more, two. Watch that supporting knee. Last one, inhale, open. Exhale, track it down and release. Ah. Okay, shake it out. Grab some water. E. Don't worry, we'll stretch that at the end of class. Ah. Okay, grab some water. I need to grab some as well. We go into a next sequence in one second. Let's take a few elevate lifts for our calves, just to give our glutes a second to uh, breathe before we go into our next sequence. So standing parallel, you can either be hip distance apart or you can bolt your legs together if you wanna practice um, a little bit more inner thigh connection. Go ahead and just begin to press your heels up and lower your heels down. And then take that again, press up and lower down. All right, as you continue to go, I want you to think when you lift your heels, everything zips up your midline. In fact, I'm just gonna face this way, right? So that you can have a good visual. Now I am somebody that is bow-legged. Okay, meaning my legs sort of bow outwards. So I wanna try to not sit into that bow leggedness because if I do, I go to the outer edges of my pinkies. So I really need to concentrate on zipping up my inner thighs. Now, if you're the opposite of that and you're knock kneed, I want you to think of applying a little bit more pressure to the outer parts of your hips and legs. And then for everybody that's hyperextended, take a softening behind your knees so that you can really locate this into your calves. Pull your belly in. Good, nice slow presses. If you want, you can challenge your balance and take your palms together. If not, just keep yourself attached to your surface. Good, ankles stay glued together if you're closed. All right, you all, we have this for eight. Slowly lower. Seven, nice work you all, and down. Nice and even, six. It's not about how high up you get, it's about how controlled you can be and correct in form. Six, so just when you start to fatigue, don't, don't um, sacrifice height for your form. Last three. And lift as you lower, belly pulls in as you lower to control that, two. Good, try to make sure both legs are working evenly. Last one, lift it up and down. Good, you all shake those legs out. We come into our next little sequence here. Whew. Grab for your ball again, or your pillow, whatever it may be. I want you to squeeze that ball, okay? So your palms are going to be at your ball, your hip distance apart and parallel. So my elbows are out wide. I'm just applying a slight pressure in towards my midline to help me activate my core. So the more that I push on the ball, I want that to sort of apply to my whole front section. Parallel squat, send your weight back and down. Push and stand back up tall. Keep that engagement on your object, right? So my elbows are wide, but my shoulders are not being hiked up into my ears. I wanna keep them pressing back and down. From the side, my weight is definitely going back. I am pitching forward so that I can have my weight back and push through the back sides of my heels to engage all the way up the back sides of my legs right to there. Down and press. Good, you all. Breathe. Activate your inner thighs, even though this is not an inner thigh exercise. You can think of that magnetic connection all the way down, firing all the way up. Good, push more through your heels, pull your belly in further. Weight stays back and down. Here we go for eight and seven good after these next six we're going to add rotation with flexion of our knee and hip five we hold the ball where it is it sounds more complicated than it actually is four push through your heels good relax your ribs three and push two more try to get that crease of your cheek activated and turned on last one inhale down hold down now, as you pop up, you're going to twist and pull your right leg up, send it back down. I know, everybody opposite side, work in that balance. It takes a second, one or two, for you to really get this. 
Right now, as you twist, squeeze that ball. Inhale down, exhale, twist and squeeze. Inhale down, exhale, twist. Right, so the whole goal whew, is to not be falling. It's for you to tell your body, okay, come down. And then go up and then come down. Yes, I'm loving all these props. And up and down, good, keep squeezing. The squeezing of the ball helps you to deepen into your core, <sighs> right? So it's the same idea. Low abs, pull your knee up, not your hip flexors. All right, here we go. We have this for 10. Get low. <sighs> and nine, squeeze and ring out your torso down. Good, you all, eight. And down. Seven, breathe. Push more through your heel when you stretch your legs. Six. And down. Good, last five, and down. And push, squeeze. Good, three. Are you really thinking about deepening your core as you twist? Two. Last one. Good, hold on to that ball. We take jump squats. If jump squats are not in your practice today, just go regular up and down squats. Here we go, jump, and jump. Landing toe ball heel. Tracking your knees right over your second toe. Keep that pressure applied to your ball, right from the side. You look like so, keeping your ribs engaged. Good, you all, we have 10. Jump push, nine, don't give up, eight. Here we go, seven, six. Be smart for your surface, five. If you're on a tile floor, don't jump. Three, push, two, last one. Woo, shake it out even though I'm pretty sure that my floor underneath this is pure concrete. <laughs> All right, shake your legs out. Whew. Let's go ahead and come back down to our mat to grab some water if you need. We have one little last sequence here before we take our stretch. <sighs> Firing up for the last sequence, more abdominals because why not? Go ahead and make your way down onto your mat. <sighs> All right. Legs come into tabletop. Just have your pillow or your ball in your right hand. We're going to do like a little weave of a basket or basketball, whatever you want to think of. But just for now, start with your single leg stretch. One leg at a time. And we'll continue to add on to this. If you're finding that you're going into an arch, extend your legs longer towards the ceiling. Always the option to not have the object in your hands and place your hands underneath your sacral region. When you're ready, curl your head, neck and shoulders up and begin to weave the ball in figure eights. Under your bent leg, right? So it's coming through your midline, swimming. Good. All right, yes, Phil, you actually have a basketball. <laughs> and reach. Good, the whole goal here is to not lower your neck down and pull your knees in closer to your chest. It's to lengthen your legs away and pull your chest higher. All right, so go ahead and smush your low back into the mat for sure here. Pull your belly in, curl up higher. Good, increase the tempo. Keep switching, working that arm, hands, eye coordination. Pulling your belly in, switching. Good, you all breathe. Here we go for 10, nine, belly in further, eight. Good, relax the tension in your neck, seven. Switch and change, six, faster, five. Good, nice and agile, four. Nice, three, two, and one. Good, hug everything in, relax down. Drop and rock side to side. We do a very similar thing, but with scissors. So rather than single leg stretch, we take the same concept into scissors. So when you're ready, extend your legs up into the air. Begin to scissor one leg at a time. Switch change. Head, neck, and shoulders down, but I'm ready with my object. In four more, I'm going to curl my head, neck, and shoulders up. And remember, same modifiers apply for this. Hands under the butt, keep your head, neck, and shoulders down, all that good stuff. Here we go, curl and reach through those legs. Slow it first. <laughs> we got an elephant going on in here, that's so cute. <laughs> all 
All right, you all, can you curl up higher? Can you pull your abs in further? Can you go faster? Good. And switch and change. Good, breathe. Pull your belly in, lengthen your arms, lengthen your toes. Here we go for 10, nine, eight, you got it. Seven, six, ooh, I'm really working up a sweat now. And five, here we go, yes, four, breathe. Three, good stuff. Two, yes, you got it, last one. All right, hug your knees in, relax everything down, and rock side to side. You all, we are done with that. We'll come into our stretch, grab some water, and meet me back onto your chair. We're gonna flip our chairs around to take our final stretch sequence. Nice work, everyone. All right, so seated on our chair. I promised a little figure four stretch for our hips. So go ahead and take your right leg across and let that thigh hopefully float open, right? What you want to negate is sort of like distorting in your hips. You want your hips to remain nice and tall, seated on your chair, vertical up and down and forward. And then if you're ready, go ahead and take your forward fold. You can either hold your hands on your legs to give a little help, or you can let those arms release down to find a deeper stretch. Good, taking something that works for you, keep your right foot flexed. And keep trying to think about pulling your right hip back, right back towards the back wall, and then dropping that thigh open even further. Good, breathe here. Nice big breaths. One more, inhale in through your nose. Pressing your right thigh open, exhale, big sigh. And slowly roll yourself up. <sighs> Switch, other side. Crossing left leg over, sit up nice and tall. What I mean is I don't want you to sort of distort in your hips and shift, right? I want you to keep them square, two headlights of your car facing the direction that you are going. And then take that forward fold. Keep trying to let your left thigh this time melt open. Good. To find a deeper stretch if you're forward in your fold, continue to pull your right, oh, sorry, your left hip back towards your back wall. So the tendency is that one to slip forward and you wanna keep pulling it back to keep it even and square. <sighs> nice big breath. Good, you all keeping your left foot flexed. In through your nose and deepen into your stretch. Exhale out through your mouth and slowly roll through your spine, lengthening yourself up. Good, you all plant your feet down. We'll take our chair pose, this time a little bit um, more advanced than the first time that we did it. Plant your legs together, take your hands to prayer, lift up tall first, pull your belly in, then rotate towards the right. And find that palm in between both, uh, sorry, in between your sternum. If you are wanting to, open your arms and gaze towards the ceiling, finding a deeper stretch with a lengthened arm. Sometimes this kind of hurts. I'm gonna continue in this prayer because I feel like I can feel a deeper stretch here. Right, take a nice big inhale, twist further, and exhale, bring it on home. Good, sit up nice and tall. We'll come into our other side, right? So we're trying to stretch this mid section of our spine. Inhale, twist, wring your torso out like a wet towel. Once you can't twist any further, dive forward. Again, trying to get the center of your hands at the center of your sternum. Gazing up towards the ceiling, taking your full length in your arms if you took it on the first side. Good, keep breathing here. Increase the stretch, inhale in through your nose. And big sigh, exhale. Good, slowly make your way back to center. Lift yourself up. Stand up, rotate around. Take your palms onto the edge of your chair and back your legs up so that you can find your forward fold. Good, finding even deeper than a flat back here. Right, depending on the height of your surface. 
What you are trying to not have happen here is this sort of roundedness in my spine. I want to think tail up to the ceiling, stick my butt out. Good, and then just find that length. Good, you all. Take some nice big breaths here. If you need to soften behind your knees to find that, go ahead and do so. In through your nose. And a big sigh. Again, filling up your lungs in. And release it out. Good, one more time, inhale. And exhale. Good, slowly soften behind your knees. Walk your legs in so that you can set yourself up to roll through your spine, coming to vertical. We take one last stretch here for our quads. Go ahead and spin your chair around one last time. And we'll take a quad stretch. All right, so I'm gonna start with my right leg first, flexing at my knee, grabbing for the top of my right foot, and finding a quad stretch. Now from the back, you don't want your knees to be apart, right? You wanna glue your femurs together. From the side, you wanna try not to be anterior tilting forward. You wanna lift up tall in the front of that hip. And then from there, increase the flexion of your knee. So hopefully you're all feeling a nice stretch at the front of your right quad. Good, breathe. Good, one more nice big breath here. I feel like we don't stretch our quads enough in this class. Inhale. And a big sigh. Good, slowly release that leg down. Taking your opposite side now. Left hand to top of left foot. Glue your femurs together. Stand up super tall from the base of your pelvis, right? Pull your belly in. And just slowly practice relaxing into this stretch. Good, nice big ins and outs. Good, one more nice big breath here. In, stand up nice and tall. Pull your belly in even further. And exhale. Good, you all slowly release that leg. Shake your legs. You guys are all done for today. Thank you so much for joining in. I hope you enjoyed so many props used today. Uh, but I think it was a fun way to sort of switch it up. If you guys have any questions about anything we did, please stay on or shoot me an email. If not, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and I hope to see you again in the near future. Thanks you guys. Whew, we made it. <laughs>